Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this lava cracked surface material in Blender. The material that we will be creating is not too advanced, so if you are a beginner, this tutorial is perfect for you. Here is the preview of the node setup that we will be creating. To make our life easier, let's first enable two things in the user preferences. One is going to be the node wrangler and the other one is the extra shading pie menu items. To do this, go over to edit, down to preferences, then underneath the navigation tab, or actually key map, make sure extra shading pie menu is turned on. This will allow you to press Z and you'll see material preview, and then all the other extra things that you see here. This is very useful for this tutorial. Next up, in the user preferences, we're going to go underneath the add-ons, and then enable the node wrangler add-on by typing in node, and then making sure the node wrangler add-on is turned on. This will make our life much easier when dealing with nodes. I'm going to delete the default cube and then press shift A and add in a UV sphere. To give ourselves a little bit more geometry on this UV sphere, I'm going to go over to the modifier tab, click add modifier, and click on subdivision surface or the shortcut control 2. Then we can right click and go shade smooth. From there, we can start working on the material. I'm going to split this window right here by dragging in the top right corner and switching this over to the shader editor. Then I'll press N to close off that panel and give it a new material. The first thing that we are going to do with this procedural material is creating the cracks. We're going to do something a little bit similar to this tutorial by adding in a Verona texture first. So I'll press Shift A underneath texture, add in a Verona texture. With the node Wrangler add on, if you control Shift left click on any node, it will add in a viewer node connected to the material output. So if we press Z and go into material preview, we can see exactly what this node is doing. With this Verona texture, I'm gonna switch this over to distance to edge, and this will allow us to have the cracks as you can see. And then for the scale of the cracks, I'm gonna set it up to nine. And that is looking pretty good. Now currently they're all very straight and not very realistic. So in order to fix that, we're gonna use a noise texture to influence the vector location. I'm going to press shift A, add in a texture and a noise texture. Then I'll press shift A, add in a color mix RGB. And then finally, I'll add in a texture coordinate node. So I'll press shift A, go to input and texture coordinate and we'll place that here. We're going to take the generated, plug that into the noise. And then the generated is going to go into the bottom input of this mix node. So what I'm gonna do is take the factor value, plug that into the top input of the mix node, and then the color is gonna go into the vector. This factor value controls if you want zero noise or a lot of noise. I'm gonna bring this up to a value of about 0.8, so let's go with 0.85 actually. And then for the noise texture, we're gonna set the scale up to 15. Now we're starting to get a lot more detail. And then of course the detail is gonna go all the way up to 16 and then maybe a slight amount of roughness. To make this look even better, we're going to add in a color ramp to determine where the black and white values are. So I'll add in a converter color ramp and place that here. Then all we have to do is take the white value, drag it closer to the black value, and then we get this. When dealing with large node setups, it's very important to stay organized. So since this, all these nodes right here are for the cracks, I'm going to click and drag to draw a box around each of the nodes and then hit control J. This will add in a frame. If we press the N key to open up the properties panel, we can name this frame and I'm just gonna call it cracks. If you want to, you can give it a color, but I'm just gonna leave it as black. So now if we select the frame and G to move, it'll move all those nodes at once. Next up, let's create the surface of the material. So all of the black bumps and everything like that. To do this, we're gonna be adding in another noise texture. So I'll press shift A, go to texture and then noise, and then we'll place that here. The scale we will leave at five and the detail amount, I'm gonna drag that all the way up to 16. Let's control shift left click on this to see what it looks like. The distortion I'm gonna drag up to 0.16 just to give it a slight amount of distortion. Then we're gonna press shift A, add in a color ramp to determine where the noise is on our, on our surface. And I'm going to actually flip this color ramp just like this. And then I'm going to drag the white value slightly closer to the black value. 
This is also going to enable us to have different variations in the height of our surface. So some parts will be flat and some parts will be bumpy. To combine both the cracks and this noise texture, we're gonna add in a color mix RGB and we'll place that here. And this is actually gonna go into the factor input. Then the color is gonna go into the top input of the mix. And this is going to be set to black, just like that. So now to get all of the bumps, we're going to press Shift A, add in a vector bump node and place that here. Take the color and plug that into the height, then the normal into the normal of the principled shader. Now, if we can control shift left click on this, this is what we're going to get if it will load. There we go, this is what we're getting. And that is looking pretty cool, but it's currently all white. So we're gonna set the base color, not completely black, but just slightly above it, right about there. And then the roughness, I'm gonna drag all the way up to 0.9. And there we go, we now have cracks in our material and it's looking pretty cool. The strength of it is slightly too high, so let's drag that down to 0.8. So if you want bigger cracks in your material, just drag the color ramp over this way and you'll get bigger ones. If you want smaller ones, drag it closer to the black value. You also might notice that some parts of our material also have the flat spots. So if you want more variation, you can drag this up and more flat will come in. I'm gonna drag it up just slightly, just like that. The next step is to take the cracks and then add an emission value to those. To do this, we're gonna press Shift A, add in a shader and emission shader. We'll place that here. Then we're going to mix both of these shaders together by adding in a mix shader. We're going to take the emission, plug that into the top input, and that's gonna go into the bottom input. And then this color value from the color ramp is gonna go into the factor. Once we do this, you'll notice that all of the cracks now have this emission shader. With the emission shader, you can give it a color if you want to, and it might look a little bit better. But what I'm gonna do is actually add in another noise texture to influence the color. Because right now, if we were to switch this over to an orange color, everything would have that same exact orange color and it wouldn't look as good. So instead, we're gonna add in multiple colors to give it some variation. Instead of adding a new noise texture, we're going to grab the one down here, select it, shift it, and drag it up. You might notice though that it's still in the frame. So to remove it from the frame, you can press Alt P on your keyboard and that will remove it. I'm also going to add in a new converter color ramp to add in some different colors. I'll take the color value, plug that into the factor, then the color into the emission color. For this color ramp, we're going to add in a new handle and we're gonna do three different colors. The one on the far left is going to have a nice tan color, so I'll drag this up. Somewhere around here is probably good. And then for this middle node, we're going to select it and this is going to be a red color. Then the one on the far right is going to have an orange color, so something like this. The scale of the noise texture, we're going to drag up to, let's say 95, we'll try that. And there you go, now we have some variation and that's looking much better. The distortion, I might drag up to a value of one and this might look a little bit better. The strength of the emission, we're also going to turn up to 15. We're going to organize our nodes once again, so I'm going to box select all of these, control J to add in a frame. And with this frame, I'm going to call it cracks color. I'll give it a color and I'll set it to an orange. Before we do any more nodes, let's actually do a couple of EV settings so we can see the material a little bit better. I'm gonna go over to the EV settings right here, turn on bloom, screen space reflections. Then over in the world settings, I'm going to set the color of the world all the way down to black. I'm going to select the light in our scene as well and then switch it over to a sun lamp with a strength of four. So now if we press Z and go into rendered view, this is the look that we're getting. If I toggle overlays, our material is starting to look pretty good. One thing that we're gonna do though is limit the amount of cracks in our material. Cause right now it's everywhere and the light is also everywhere. So we're going to fix that. To do that, I'm going to select this noise texture once again, shift D it, and then press Alt P to remove it from that frame and drag it up to the top. I'm going to add in another color ramp. So press shift A, add in a color ramp. If we take the color value, we can plug that into the color ramp. And with these settings, I think all of these settings are actually pretty good for what I want. So we're gonna leave them as they are. 
And then I'm also going to add in a color, mix RGB, and place that here. We're gonna mix both of these together, so this noise texture and this Veroni texture. We're gonna mix them so the cracks aren't everywhere on our material. I'll take the color, plug that into the top input, and then this color is gonna go into the factor. The color of this, we need to drag all the way up to white. If we control shift left click on this, we can see this is the effect that we're getting. So we're gonna to have to play around with this color ramp to get the desired effect. I'm also going to flip this color ramp, drag the white closer, and then also drag the black closer. So if you want less cracks, drag the white closer to the black and it will get rid of a lot of those cracks. And I'm happy with that. So the cracks aren't appearing everywhere now on our material. And then of course, we're going to take this color and this is going to be the factor of the emission. So plug that into the factor, control shift, left click on the mix shader. We can see the emission is now not everywhere on our material and it might be a little bit too much still. So I'll drag this this way slightly. There we go, something like that. To make this stand out a little bit more, we can bring the strength of the emission up to 25 and that might look slightly better. All right, the last thing that we will do with this material is add in a little bit of atmosphere. Now, the way I did this previously in the planet tutorial is I used this normal node and it just did not work as good. So I have found a much, much better way to add in an atmosphere and it will actually interact with the light. So if you were to move the light source, it will also move the atmosphere as well. I found out this trick watching a Nebula Oblivion tutorial. I'll put the video down in the description if you want to check it out. So how this is gonna work is we're going to actually add in a shader and a diffuse shader, and then we'll control shift left click on this shader to preview it. Next up, we're going to convert this shader into an RGB value, which we can use as a mask. So I'm going to press shift A, add in a converter and then shader to RGB, and we'll place that here. So now if we preview this, this is the effect that we're getting. To get the atmosphere to only appear along the edges, we're going to add in a Fresnel node. So press shift A, add in a Fresnel, and we'll place that here. If we control shift left click on this, this is the effect that we're getting. So now if we combine both of these, we're going to get the atmosphere effect. I'll add in a color mix RGB and place that here. This is gonna go into the top input and the shader is gonna go into the factor. This color down here, I'm gonna drag all the way down to black and it looks like we actually need to invert this. So I'm gonna add in a color ramp. We'll place that here and then flip the direction of this color ramp. So click on this menu and click on flip color ramp. So now we're getting this atmosphere effect and if we rotate this sun lamp, it'll also rotate it just like that. I'm going to drag the black a little bit closer to the white so we get a little bit more of an atmosphere. And then from here, we need to add in another emission and plug that into a mix shader. So I'll press Shift A, add in a shader, emission. We'll place that down here. Then of course, we're going to add in a mix shader. We'll take the mix shader, plug that into the top input. And then this emission is gonna go into the bottom and then all of this node setup that we just created right here, this is going to be the factor. If we control shift left click on this now, we should be able to see the atmosphere effect. And there we go, we can see it just like that. The color though is not the right color. So I'm gonna set the color over to an orange, something like this, maybe a little bit more of a red. If you want less of an atmosphere, you can change the Fresnel node down here, which I might do. So if I drag this a little bit lower, it'll close up on that atmosphere and this is the effect that we're getting. And there we go, now that we've created our material, all we have to do is just tweak some of the colors if you want to. So for example, this red color, I might drag up to more of a lighter red, and I think that might look a little bit better. And then this value here, I'll drag a little bit this way, something like this. And this is very customizable, so if you wanted to change it over to an ice planet, you can do that really easily. We'll add in a color hue saturation, place that there, so now if we change the hue, it will also change that. So let's go with a blue. And then over in the principled shader, if we change the base color over to a light gray or white, we get this sort of an effect. If you want bigger cracks in your material over in this color ramp, just drag this down a little bit and you can get some bigger cracks. But there you go, that is how you create a procedural cracked surface material. I'm going to press control spacebar to go full screen on the nodes so you can see it all in one setting. 
Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you created something cool, I would love to see it. So make sure to send it to me over on Instagram at BlenderMadeEZ. I hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more tutorials in the future. That's going to be it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.